Good evening and welcome to Coaches of the Common. Um, it's hard to believe we're up to episode seven already. It's amazing how much time flies and the numbers rack up when you're having so much fun. And tonight we intend to have a lot of fun. I have got Rosemary Killip here, who is a very dear friend of mine and one of our coaches here. And she's got a really, really interesting topic. But before we get started, just to let you know, we're giving away an entrepreneur's gift at the end of this session. And you'll find a link at the bottom of the comments, which you can click on, and that will give you your free gift. So stick around, have some fun with us. Let's see what we can do. So Rosemary, I have been told that you're known as Rosie, that's right? Yeah? That's right. And you travel between Wellington, Auckland and also Australia, don't you? That's right. And you've got three businesses and you're in the process of setting up a fourth one. That's so do. what brought you here to the Common? Well, about a year ago, the lovely Gaylene Adams from Team Fusion said, hey, come and have a meeting with me at the Common. And I said, where's that? And the rest is history. So I'm a Wellington member who comes and goes from the Common when I'm here in Auckland, hang out here. Met some really cool people who do really cool things in their business and it's kind of stimulating. You know, Wellington's known as one of those towns, government <laughs> towns, and Auckland's the vibrant one. So it gives me a good kick up the bum when I need it too. Fantastic, cool. Now I understand you're an expert learning facilitator and you take really boring as batshit legal stuff and turn it into engaging content. And that's what you're here to talk to us about today, is that right? I sure am. It so I've spent 28 years doing that. Wow. And yeah, it's boring, all right? And the whole thing is making it not boring. Yeah. So people engage with it and do what they need to do with it. And that's how you make money, right? That's right. Excellent. So um, how have you done that? How do you actually go about making money from boring as batshit content in online workshops? The first thing I think is, like anything in business, is knowing your target or your audience and really understanding it from their perspective, their pain points, what they want to know, what they already know about whatever it is that you have got to offer. So if you're offering a health product, what do they already know about your health product? Maybe they've already seen it on Google and they already know something. So there's no point spending an hour and a half telling them what the product is when what they want to know is how does it work or how does it affect me or how much does it cost? So dealing with their issues and their pain points first. So understanding the audience by asking them what they want to know, that's what helps really engage. And it's the same with sales and marketing of any sort, right? Sure. And so how do you kind of understand what the real value is for them? Yeah, I think when we're an expert in our own topic, whatever it might be, it's really tempting to go pushing on out and saying, everyone needs to know everything about everything I know, rather than going and interviewing your buyer persona, the typical people who you want to do a workshop with or sell to, and ask them what are their pain points. Ask them some strategic questions, shut up and listen, and then structure your workshop around what they have as their issues, problems and pains. And that way, they see real value because you have given them something that they wanted. And then they're ready with their credit card, ready to buy because the price isn't the point, the value's the point, yeah? Absolutely, cool. Now I have to ask this question. I'm online a fair bit and on Facebook I keep seeing all these adverts, you know, sign up to this latest program, develop an online training program and we'll make you millions. This isn't one of those courses, is it? Oh, it sure is not. Okay. Oh gosh, I see those too because like many of you, I'm on Facebook and I see this bombardment of people with get rich quick online course creation. Don't do it. It takes hard work, it takes planning, it takes integration. You've got to have a way to get those bums on seats, be they online or in person. And also, there's a lot of structure that needs to go into understanding how to put your online program together. And these get rich quick ones, they're only making millions for the people who are selling them. Yeah. You know, because really, what, are, what do we want? We want something that's easy or quick. We want something we can put online that people can digest. In my building law business, most of my people who buy from me don't do online. So I had to spend a lot of time even selling the conversion. Mm. I'm not doing this live anymore. We're going online. So you've got to think that through. Sure. Does your buyer persona even engage online? Yeah. Maybe you should do a workshop first and that's your best you know, opportunity to make some money. Sure. So you do a mixture of both in-person workshops and online, per um, online workshops? Yeah, yeah, I'd say right now probably about 50-50. Okay. Yeah, and people still like some of that old-fashioned get up close and personal because then they can 
kind of feel like they're not being exposed. Mm-hmm. I mean, most of us don't mind online because we're online right now, right? Mm-hmm. But for some people, I've found they don't ask those questions because it's such a public forum or they don't understand how Facebook or any online platform works. Mm-hmm. So they want to ask you in person or actually come up to you in the break and say, excuse me, I've got a question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen that. So what would you say are the most common mistakes that people make? I think the first one, like I said before, is about not knowing your audience, thinking you know, but not actually going to investigate research. Who are they? Really, what do they already know about your product? What age are they? All those sort of things you do with a buyer persona, the same thing you do with a workshop. Who are you targeting? And really understand what they already know, because sometimes people have to unlearn things before you can teach them something new. Sure. Second thing is we all cram too much content in. It's so tempting, right? (laughs) You're an expert in your field, whatever that is, and you just, everyone needs to know everything about everything you know. It's not true. You could have four or five workshops. When I coach people looking at their content, often we've got post-it stickies everywhere, and it's like, actually, no, this content's not happening. And they cry, (laughs) oh, but I want my content. It's like, no, that's a second workshop. There's a beginner one, an intermediate one, and a follow-up masterclass one. Now they've got three workshops out of what they were trying to do with one, and they can see a progression of how they could make money from the first one, the second one, and the follow-up one. And do they use things like parking lots in their actual workshops to get information about what the second and the third workshop might look like? Often not. People are so engaged in what they're teaching, or they're so passionate about their product or service, they forget to do that. Yep. They forget to do an evaluation. They forget to do a follow-up email. Thank you for coming. What else are you interested in? Or even just listening or having someone volunteering in their workshop to go around and listen. What were people saying? And often it happens when they're having coffee or a wine later, and that's when the real juice comes out. Oh, my, there is the next great thing. Yep, fantastic. Okay, um, I've got to ask, what's the funniest thing that's ever happened? Oh my gosh, the funniest thing. Uh, I was on a road show with a group of technical experts and one of the women I was with wasn't feeling well. There were three of us, we had tag team, we had it all down pat, we knew exactly what's going on. And she was feeling ill. Yep. She got up to speak and she threw up oh, no. in front of everybody, <laughs> like, like just a little bit, like a lot. Yep. And instead of being empathetic, I just cracked up laughing. It was <laughs> like comedy show. Yep. And of course, we had to clean her up and clean it up because it stank. And here we were, like, oh my God, it still smells, and having to keep delivering. So God bless her. She got cleaned up, but it was... I I cried. It was so funny, I cried. (laughs) Excellent. Um, Now, obviously, you know, you're her coach here at The Common, and the idea of these sessions is to get to know you a little bit, and then people are going to get in contact with you and find out more. So they can go to The Common website, they can find you there, but what else can they do to find out more about you? Look, you can check me out on LinkedIn at Rosemary Killip, and I post quite a lot up there, also about building issues, just by the by. (laughs) And, of course, rosemarykillip.com. That's my website. If you jump on there, you get a free book around the things we've talked about today. Oh, cool. Okay. And so just um, putting it out to the floor, we've got viewers out there who are obviously watching it at the moment. Do we have any questions at the moment from the floor? Not at the moment? <laughs> okay. Um, Alma, have we got anybody there that wants you to answer questions? I've got a couple more I can ask, but I just want to make sure we're not missing out on anything. And by the way, hi to Donna. Good to see you. So just so that's what's the what's the engaging tips to grow what are, what are some of the quick tips to quick grow, tips? grow our paid Facebook uh, card to engaging content and money. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. got that. Yep. Yep. So I see a lot of my time T V or live T V like we're doing. Yep. And that's one really good way is what we're doing right here, right now. Mm-hmm. And you can do that with your own content, like this interview as a style or technique. Or you could do it just, you know, from your own computer yep. by saying, look, here's the first thing people need to know. Yep. Here's a second thing. And just take it in bite-sized chunks. People really like micro bits of learning these days yep. because we don't have two hours to sit down and do things. Yep. So little tiny snippets. Fantastic. Okay, great. Um, so Donna's now asking about some online workshop tips. Um, 
can you give us just maybe the top two for online workshop tips? Really don't go researching a gazillion different platforms to run it from. People get wasted in time and money. I've got a client who had spent already $20,000 trying to get something online and still hadn't achieved that. And I introduced her to the platform I use myself and in three hours we had a course up for her. Wow. And so there's some really simple platforms, really happy to offline talk to you about that right. and how you can get something online within three hours and make it cheap, easy, quick to test it out. What's wrong with experimenting? Yeah. Yeah. People wait to make it perfect. Yeah. Minimum viable product, get it out there, test it out, yeah. make the changes as needed and then go from there. Absolutely. Okay. Any other really must, must know things that, you know, the one last thing you'd like to leave with us for the audience out there today? If you're going to do a workshop, just because you can speak and speak well, doesn't mean you can do a workshop. So please take the time to understand the planning steps of a really engaging workshop. And don't offer ones that are boring as batshit because we're all over them. You don't like attending them yourself, so let's not deliver them. Fantastic, cool. And obviously in your book that you talked about, there's some more tips and things people can actually um, dive into for that? Yes, yep. 10 things I see that are most common mistakes and 10 fixes because everything can be fixed, which is really cool. Fantastic. Well, look, thank you very, very much for sharing your knowledge with us. It's great to see. And like I said, the whole point of these sessions is to actually get the, the coaches in here, get them talking to you, getting to learn what they have to offer. Um, but by all means, they're happy to chat offline. They're happy to have a session with you. Um, and don't forget, we have got the freebie at the end of the session today which is going to be a link I'm be told at the bottom of the or in the comments at the bottom of the video um, next week we're up to episode 8 and we have Deborah Chantry and that's me um, and I'm going to be talking very much about how to price your services and products so we get lots of questions around you know how do I actually price this how do I know what my price should be so please feel free to join us again next week same time same place um, Tuesday 5:30. And um, you can either come here in person at the Common or you can come online. And Donna says thank you and thank you very much, Donna. So we look forward to seeing you all again next week. Um, have an awesome week. And Rosemary, that's brilliant. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everyone. Bye.